Let's talk about methods of charging. Uh, the first method of charging an object, which remember, charging an object just means you're transferring charge. You can't create it, you can only transfer it. Uh, the first type of charging, the most simple to understand, is charging by friction. Uh, when you do this, you start with two neutral objects, and it works best with insulators. You scrape them together, and electrons are scraped off one object and onto another object. For example, hair on a balloon, wool on foam, uh, one object ends up negatively charged, the other object ends up with the same positive charge, same magnitude. So when you rub the balloon on your hair, what happens is, if we, uh, what is left on the balloon is it scrapes off negative charge, and I know that because I tested it with that neon bulb. But what does that mean is left on the hair? It's got to be the exact same amount of positive charge is what's left there. So this is called charging by friction and we can see this right here if you take this balloon right here and you rub it on the sweater you can see how it picks up those excess charges, those excess negative charges but now look at the sweater. It's devoid or it's lost those uh, negative charges so now it's positively charged. That is charging by friction and it's no surprise that the balloon sticks to the sweater now. So uh, when you're charging by friction, a good thing to understand is what we call the triboelectric series. The triboelectric series is just a list. And I've given a partial listing here. And it simply uh, rank orders uh, different types of insulators in their tendency to accept or give up electrons during charging by friction. So things on the left of this list tend to give up electrons more easily. Uh, things on the right side of this list tend to accept electrons more, most easily. So if I rub rabbit's fur on, for example, vinyl, rubbing this on this, well, it's clear that the rabbit's fur will end up positive and the vinyl will end up negative. How about if I did something like this? What if I rubbed wool on a piece of silk? What would happen there? Well, because the wool is more to the left on this list, it would end up positive, the silk would end up negatively charged. Uh, when we rub a balloon on hair, the balloon becomes negative, the hair positive, and this gives us an easy way to determine the signs of objects, just by seeing if a balloon repels from it. If it doesn't, if it does repel, it's the object is negatively charged. If our negative balloon attracts, it may not be positive, and we'll see why that is in a minute. The next method of charging is what we call charging by conduction. And let's just watch a, uh, a video that explains this whole concept. The initial charge on the electroscope is neutral. When the electroscope knob is touched by a negatively charged rod, a number of electrons jump onto the neutral knob. We call this process charging by contact. Remember that each electron repels every other electron, and the repulsive force they exert on each other will cause them to move as far apart as possible. Since the electroscope is metal, the electrons are not confined to the knob, but spread themselves uniformly throughout the entire electroscope. Because the electroscope now has a negative charge, the leaves will repel each other and diverge. If we touch the electroscope with a positively charged rod, the result will be the same. This time, some electrons transfer from the knob to the positively charged rod. The resulting shortage of electrons leaves the electroscope with an overall positive charge, and accordingly, the leaves will again repel each other. Now we should mention at this point that you actually don't even have to touch the electroscope with the charged rod. You could just bring it near the electroscope and the electroscope will become polarized and you still get the same effect. By drawing away electrons in this case, it will leave the leaves of the electroscope more positively charged and they will repel each other. So let's, let's more fully discuss charging by contact, um, also called charging by conduction. Uh, typically, when you do this, you got to start with one charge object, and it, it works way better with conductors because uh, if you just touch an insulator, you might get a couple electrons, but uh, the electrons, if you have a conductor, they can many more can flow off. So what you do is you touch it or get it close enough to, so the particles can jump to another conductor. Electrons jump off of one conductor and onto the other because electrons are repelled by negative charge and attracted by positive charge. Uh, so... Uh, in this situation, before, before the conductors contact, 
this is all charged negatively, and this is a neutral charge. These are both conductors. After they touch, and these are exactly the same size, you might guess how much charge moves off. Well, because electrons want to be in equilibrium, they want to go away from uh, other electrons, they will spread out as far as possible. So there are a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight charges on this one. After they touch, there'll be four on this one and four on this one. They will spread out evenly. Same thing happens when you have, so in other words, these electrons have moved over there when you brought it close enough to touch. Uh, and if you have positive charge, well, how the heck can positive charges move? Well, again, what happens is electrons, when these two touch, electrons jump off of this guy and over to here. Because these electrons, even though this whole thing is neutral, they're pulled by these positive charges. When we're all done, you have completely spread out positive charge evenly spread out between the two. Now, you might ask, what happens if the objects are of different sizes? So what I've got here is a charged object, and I've got <clears throat> these represent, these each negative charge may represent like a nanocoulomb or something. This has got one half the radius. So you might suspect that the charge won't split into two. In fact, the ratio of charges is proportional to the radii. So this has got nine, each will let each one represent a nanocoulomb, nine nanocoulombs on it, nine NC, uh, negative 9 NC. This is zero, but after they touch, these electrons, of course, when they touch, th these will jump over to there. And this only happens if they get really, really close or they actually touch. Uh, and what will happen is it'll spread out so the charge is proportional to the radius. So this is double the radius. It's got to have double the charge. This is going to have six nanocoulombs, one two, three, four, five, six, and this will have three on it. One, two, three. And we'll explain that later using electric potential. So this now has negative six nanocoulombs, and this has negative three nanocoulombs because it has half the radius. Um, charges spread out until the electric potential on each conductor is equal. Let's now talk about charging by induction. Uh, I believe this is the most confusing method and some students have a hard time with it. It is quite simple if you really understand what's going on. Uh, there are two ways of charging by induction and we'll take a look at both of these. So uh, the first method is this. You start with a charged object right here. Start with a charged object. We'll call it object one and you just bring it near don't touch it, just bring it near object two, like this would be far enough away, this would work. Uh, bring it near to object two, which is a neutral conductor. Do not bring them close enough for charging by conduction. Okay. So what would happen to this object when I bring this object nearby? Well, as you might guess, this will become polarized. These electrons will push other electrons away. In fact, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you could even get up to eight, eight nanocoulombs if each one of these represent a nanocoulomb pushed over to this side. But what does that leave on this side? It leaves one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight positive nanocoulombs. So these are all positive charges that have been abandoned by these electrons because these electrons over here on the right they're like, get me away from that charged object. The, la the next step here is then to ground this thing. You give these excess electrons a way to get back to, uh, a way to get away from the other electrons, and they're like, heck yeah, get me out of here. And in fact, those will all get the heck out of there until when we're all done, the charge on this thing will actually be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight nanocoulombs of positive charge. Notice that this charge right there, none of those charges left. The charge did not come from this object right there. It came from the fact that this object here became polarized and then 
when we gave the electrons away to escape through ground, they did. And now we have a positively charged object. So you can, by induction, use a negatively charged object to charge another object positive as long as you've got a ground. And this is the symbol for ground right there. The other way to do this, very similar, is you start off with a negatively, or doesn't matter what sign, but you start off with a charged object, and you have two touching conductors. These two are touching. Now, you might guess what will happen uh, when you have these two conductors that are touching near an object like this. Well, you'll, again, polarize this, but this will have excess electrons over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nanocoulombs, maybe. And way over here will be the nuclei that were abandoned. And there's too many there. Uh, so these two objects are polarized. They're, they're touching right here. And that's important that they're touching. And all you got to do to finish the job here is separate these two objects. Once they're separated, what you have is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nanocoulombs on that one, negative eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight positive nanocoulombs on that one. So this is negative eight nanocoulombs, and this is positive eight nanocoulombs if each one of those charges represents a nanocoulomb. So that's the other way to charge by induction. This applet here will give us kind of a, an animation of what charging by induction actually looks like. So I'm going to press start here. Again, it starts off with a polarization. We brought this positively charged rod nearby, and this conductor is polarized. In the next step, we ground the conductor. Now, when we ground the conductor, negative charges come up from the Earth or really from infinitely far away or whatever you'd like to call it uh, because they're closer to these positive charges. So again, Coulomb's law, positive being closer than negative, it's more attractive to electrons. So it pulls electrons out of the ground. Once we take that ground away and we take away the charged rod, we can see that this is charged negatively. There's only one, two, three, four positive charges, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight negative charges it is now charged negatively by induction. And notice that during this process, the rod doesn't lose any of its charge. It stays charged the same amount the entire time.